Hello folks, this is Tom from anti-proton.com and as you know I love radioactive elements, especially potassium. Potassium is a fun element because it's relatively safe, but it ticks enough to make the Geiger counter squeal a little bit. Let me tell you a little bit about potassium because it's important to understand about potassium. Potassium is a an, an, an really, really important alkali metal that your body requires to uh, survive. Most people get their potassium from things like bananas, like this guy right here. Potassium has 19 protons and about 19 electrons and of course that is what makes it potassium. If you, the, the neutrons are not necessarily equal to the protons all of the time which is what creates isotopes. A total of 19 protons plus 20 neutrons equals 39 which is the mass number of the most common form of potassium you find. Remember protons plus neutrons equal mass number. So when I say potassium 39, which is the stable potassium, it's not radioactive, it is this number minus this number will tell you how many neutrons are available. If you add an additional neutron to potassium, you get potassium 40, which has 21 neutrons. Potassium 40 is radioactive and it exists and occurs in less than 1% of normal potassium. That is the potassium we're talking about today. Additionally, there is one other less common but non-radioactive potassium known as potassium 41. Potassium is able to decay three different ways. It can decay as a, well, they're all beta decay. As a, it can decay as an electron plus an anti-electron neutrino, a positron, which is anti-electron, and a regular electron neutrino, or even as the capture of an electron that's free moving, which will then cause a resulting gamma ray to be emitted. I don't have the specifics for positron capture, or sorry, positron emission energy-wise, and I don't want to give you what I think are correct specs because I don't want to tell you the wrong thing. I'll tell you that beta electron emission is approximately 1.3 million electron volts per emission. The result is the potassium-40 turning into calcium-40. The capture of an electron, which occurs about 10% of the time, keeping in mind that 89% of the time, give or take, you get an electron, but 10% of the time you capture an electron. When you capture an electron, the nucleus becomes unstable and must release a gamma particle at 1.5, give or take, million electron volts. We're not going to go into multiple decibel, decimals here. And that becomes an uh, argon-40 atom. I believe off the top of my head that potassium... 40 that undergoes positron emission, I believe it puts off uh, several hundred, uh, 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 several hundred, it's either kilo or mega electron volt uh, positron, and I think it turns into argon 40, but I don't want to say that for sure. That's just off the top of my head. I think that might be correct. But I know the two top ones are fine. Anyway, that means that technically speaking, potassium emits antimatter every now and then too. Perfectly safe. The specific radioactivity, if you're curious what that means, is, and yes, I have radioactive samples to show you in a minute, so we're getting there, is two, uh, 265,400 becquerels per gram. So 265.4 kilo, meaning thousand, becquerels per gram, and a becquerel is one decay per second. So every second, one gram of potassium will undergo 265,400 radioactive decays by one of these three modes. Let's show you some potassium. First off, let's cut on the Geiger counter. Let's cut on my external sounder. You can get liquid potassium. In this case, it's water and potassium mixed together. It's dissolved. Potassium dissolves just like any other salt. In this case, potassium chloride, which is the only potassium really that I have on me today except for potassium citrate. Potassium citrate, a little bit different, but not much. And here you can see I bought it at a store in a bottle. It's actually taken as a supplement. You're supposed to eat it. As though you don't get enough potassium in your diet normally. You can also buy potassium salt. If, let's say, you have sodium problems and you're not supposed to take in sodium, or if you're trying to cut back, you can buy potassium salt. Potassium salt is nice and radioactive, which is fun, because you can go to the store and buy this stuff right in the same aisle where you get sugar and regular salt. The only difference is your, your new salt you can put in a bag like I do, put it by your Geiger counter and it will emit radiation. Well, I'm not really ticking too well today, am I? There we go. There's a little. Well, I know how to crank that up a notch. Give me a second and we're going to really see what we can do. Here are potassium crystals that I made. 
I took potassium uh, chloride and I boiled it in water and then I dried it and it formed all these little cubic crystals. Each one of them looks like a little microchip. They're all little squares. Alright, so we're getting 22 counts per minute. It's not too bad. As we talk about potassium, let's see if we can get some really big ticks though. Let's move all of these little toys out of the way. These are, these are toys. Let's bring in the real potassium. This is from Water Softener. It is a humongous bag full of potassium. Now, let's do one thing quickly and put this, uh, put this down for just one second. Now hold on. I'm going to put my Geiger counter inside of a plastic bag so that it isn't injured from the potassium. We don't want to get potassium count, uh, powder inside of the Geiger counter, the inner workings. That would potentially damage the Geiger counter. So there, let me seal the bag. Okay. And now, because we've done this, we can cover the Geiger counter as much as we want to. I mean, just cover it and see what we get to. So we'll add a bag of potassium salt. And another bag of potassium salt. And another bag. And another bag. And another bag. Maybe a bag right here. And one more bag. And then maybe another bag. and then the little bag, and then you, there you go. We have covered our Geiger counter in potassium salt. In fact, we've covered it with this much potassium salt. That right there represents about 20 to 30 pounds of potassium salt. The potassium salt you're seeing exists like this. It's crystals from a water softener. See the crystals? neat. Some of them are even dark and I haven't figured out the significance. It's probably an impurity of some variety. Let's see how high we can get this to go. Just potassium. Can we break the 100 threshold? I think we might. 96 counts per minute? Come on. Come on. 95. Come on. I bet we can break 100 counts per minute with some, some potassium salt. Let me push that in there good and tightly sure it gets deep, deep, deep inside of there. There we go. Well, as you can see, potassium is pretty safe to have. Even with 20 pounds of it, I'm relatively safe right this moment. Maybe a couple of these little potassium pills. Might add a little tiny bit extra to the... Um, oops, got to move them out of the way or else we can't see the indicator on the screen. We keep getting so close to 100. All right, but anyway, as you can see, potassium salt is relatively safe. And it exists in all matter, I'm sorry, in all potassium, normal um, potassium that you find will have radioactive potassium 40 in it. A neat substance that is perfectly safe. You can even eat it. I wouldn't recommend eating 20 pounds of it. I think that might kill you. But there you go. That's a pity. We got so close to um, 100 counts per minute. Radioactivity is quite random. 75, 70. I think we're going down a little bit. Oh well, I'm almost out of time. I just thought you all might get a kick out of 20 pounds of potassium salt with my little Geiger counter. Now wait till I get my new Geiger counter that is much stronger and much more so, uh, uh, sensitive than this. You can pretty much triple the reading you're getting right now, and that'll be what I'll be getting then. It's dropping right now, wow. I must have repositioned it into a bad location. Well, this has been Tom from anti-proton.com, and this is what happens when you put 20 pounds of potassium chloride salt on top of your Geiger counter. Bye-bye.